Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Somebody asked me a few weeks ago I think um, if I could make a video on how to utilize multiple SPI devices on one processor. So here we go, so here's a video to, to try and explain that. So a little bit about SPI, um, of course if you don't know it's a communication um, it's a, well, a set of communication protocols really for low level devices to allow them to, to talk to each other very very rapidly. If you try and connect two devices together using SPI usually you'll have no problems but if you connect another one to the system you'll usually find that either it doesn't work or that you get garbled data read right into the um, microprocessor. So I'm going to show you how to get around that understand and be able to get around it we really need to have a bit of a basic understanding of, of how SPI works so just very briefly I'll go through what some of these things mean so S, uh, SCK that means serial clock and that's to do with timing so that tells all these devices here that basically keeps them together it, it tells them when to transmit and when to read so the master basically drives the signal to the slaves and just says okay send your data now send your data now send your data now so this tells all of these when to respond okay so that should keep all the devices in sync then MOSI the next one MOSI stands for master out and slave in so master out slave in so it goes from the master down this line and this is a data line, so it goes to any devices that are listening. So it's instructions from the master to the slaves. Right, I'll go back to that in a minute. Meso is master in, slave out. So that goes the other way around. So that goes like this. Data from the slaves to the master. Right. So if you connect two slaves up together and you don't do any more work with it, what will happen is that they'll both know when to transmit or receive. The master will, say, will send some data out to them and they'll both receive it even though it's only intended for one device. Let's say this is a TFT and this one may be um, a transmitter. You could send some, some data to display on the TFT and the TFT will be like I know what to do with that it, it's an instruction to display some data on the t on, on me the transmitter will get it and it will think what am I supposed to do with that it, it basically wouldn't understand it whereas the other way around if you, if you were to send data both of them got it and the transmitter read the data it was for the transmitter the transmitter could be like okay I know what to do with that it's an instruction to transmit but the TFT on the other hand will be like, well, I don't understand the, the instruction. It's trying to, I don't know, is it trying to get me to output something or, or what? I don't know. So what you've got to do is somehow you have to identify who you're talking to and tell them who you're talking to. So the master's got to indicate somehow that it's talking to this one or talking to this one. And the way it does this is by means of this CS, uh, sorry, SS, 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 that's slave select. Um, sometimes they're called other things like chip select and things like that, but I'm going to call it SS. And SS means slave select. So on the master, it's not a slave, so we're not going to use it. But on these two, oh, but it will still have it though. You may still see it in the pinout. But on these two, we do need to use the slave select. Okay, so this is how it works. Let's say on our master, let's say this is an Arduino, and these three pins, or these four in this case, are default hardware set pins because they are on the Arduino and other microprocessors. But let's say we want to use digital pin 2, for example. So I'll call that D2. And let's say we've got another one, D3. So we've got two more pins which we're going to use on the Arduino. Right. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to interface with these SS pins on the slaves. In the SPI protocols, there's a provision where any devices will switch off when this is high. So if this is high, the devices will basically go deaf and dumb. So deaf and dumb. So if that's high, if SS is high, this won't respond or this won't respond. So what we have to do is we could get this pin here from the master, connect it to the SS there, get this one, and connect it to the SS there. And then in the Arduino, if we if we do a digital write high, SS here will be set high, which means don't listen and don't speak. It basically means I'm not talking to you at the moment. And likewise here, if we get D3, digital 3, and print high, don't listen. That means this one, don't listen. And don't talk. We're not talking to you. Okay. So, of course, what that would mean is, or what that mean, allows us to do is, if we want to talk to this one, we can set it low. And if we want to talk to this one, we can set this one low. So, yeah, so high means off and low means on. What we can do with this is, let's say, let's go back to our example and say this is, um, let's say this is Arduino 1, Arduino 1, and this is Arduino 2. So we're not using the transmitter and the TFT example now. These are Arduinos. And this is the master here. So what we want to do is we want to talk to Arduino 1 and then we want to stop talking to Arduino 1 and then we want to talk to Arduino 2 and then we want to stop talking to Arduino 2 and revert back to 1 and then cycle through again and again and again. So what we do in code is we do um, D3 well, this is pseudo code, by the way. D3 high. So digital 3 high. So that means digital 3 is Arduino 2 high. So don't listen. Okay. And we'd have to actually make sure that D2 is low. So D2 low. Listen. Then we'd transmit any data, transmit data, and then because we're transmitting data, we transmit it to data two, by the way, because we're trans transmitting data here, uh, master out, the data would go all the way along here and all the way along here, but this one is deaf. It doesn't hear. This one does hear. So then this one can process its data and send something back. So then when this responds, it gets the data back and we're good. We know it's this one that's received the data and transmitting the data back to us. This one is deaf and dumb. And then what we do is we then set, oh well, we receive the data as well, of course. We receive whatever we need to receive from Arduino 1. Then we do the opposite. We set D2 high, which means that then D2, which is Arduino 1, doesn't listen and doesn't talk. Whereas this one is open again. So we've set D2 high, which means don't listen. And D3 low, which means listen. So actually at this point, this can now listen. Okay, and then we can transmit or receive, and it will work. So that's how to get rid of the, the garbled sort of response. Because of course what's happening is if both are listening and both are transmitting, you'll get a response back at the same time, which will be both of them responding. And of course, um, you'll, you can also be sending messages out to both of them which only one of them is intended to get it. So the other one may be thinking, well, what's
what's that, you know? Anyway, so that's how to do it. Um, and that's how it works.